Rollers are fast moving. Unlike other big rallies, the bit earlier at about 7 a.m. Welcome to Hashtag PH Road 2013. Today on Rappler, Janet Napolis faces the Senate on November 7. President Aquino will hold nationwide dialogues to explain the controversial disbursement acceleration program. And Filipinos expelled from Saudi Arabia cry abuse following an immigration crackdown. Hello, I'm Natasha Gutierrez sitting in for Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Senate Blue Ribbon Committee Chairman T.G. Gingona says the testimony of alleged pork barrel queen Janet Napoles will push through on November 7. Gingona turns down the request of Senator Serge Osmeña to postpone the testimony to November 18, the resumption of the Senate session. Osmeña says more than half of the members of the Senate will be out of town on November 7. But some senators say there should be no more delays to Napolis' testimony. Senate Majority Leader Alan Peter Cayetano says, I believe that justice should not be made to wait. The Senate should resolve this issue as quickly as possible. It took weeks before the Senate finally summoned Napolis. Senate President Franklin Drillon initially opposed signing a subpoena for her, saying the testimony might compromise the investigation of the Ombudsman. Napolis is accused of siphoning millions in pork barrel in connivance with lawmakers who allegedly received kickbacks. The three senators implicated in the scam, Senator Jingo Estrada, Juan Ponce Enrile, and Bong Revilla, inhibited themselves from the Blue Ribbon investigation. The three senators and 35 others face a plunder complaint over the scam. Napolis' former employees turned whistleblowers will also testify on the November 7 hearing. But Estrada downplays Napolis' testimony, saying she will invoke her right to remain silent. <laughs> President Benigno Aquino plans to tour the nation to hold discussions on the Controversial Disbursement Acceleration Program, or DAP. Several groups question the constitutionality of the government's spending program before the Supreme Court. Communications Secretary Sonny Coloma says the discussions will allow Filipinos to explain their concerns over government spending, but he does not give details on how the dialogues will be conducted. Aquino's predecessor, Gloria Arroyo, conducted town hall meetings on controversial issues during her term. Coloma denies the discussions were prompted by the controversies surrounding the DAP and lawmakers' pork barrel. He says the planned dialogues are part of the continuing process of the Aquino government to, quote, reach out and inform our people of the issues that are confronting our nation. On Wednesday, Aquino delivers a primetime address defending the DAP, saying it helped drive the economy and fund significant projects. But critics say Aquino avoided the real issue of DAP's legality. The palace also says the timing of Aquino's address was not meant to sway the Supreme Court's deliberations on the DAP's constitutionality. President Aquino awards soldiers who fought against Mora National Liberation Front rebels during the attack in Zamboanga City. In September, MNLF members stormed the city in a bid to declare their independence from government. The standoff left at least 200 people dead. In a ceremony held at Camp Aguinaldo, Aquino praises the soldiers for limiting the rebels' hold on the area during the siege. Kayo nga po mga nasa harap ko ngayon ang mismong naroon sa bakbakan. Ang nakipagpalitan sa putok at nakahandang iharang ang katawan sa bala para mabawi ang lungsod ng Sambuanga sa mga rebelde. Tingnan nga po ninyo ang matinding pagkakaiba natin sa kalaban. Sa inyong hanay ang batayang layunin ng pagprotekta sa ating mamamayan. At sa kabilang panig naman ay ang mga kalabang ginawang human shield ang mga hostage. Pinuputokan ang mga bombero at kasapi ng Red Cross at di nag-atubiling idamay ang mga inosenteng sibilyan. Aquino also promises to continue helping the city recover from the siege. Ngayong malaya na muli ang Sambuanga City. Tuloy pa rin ang ayuda natin para sa kanilang rehabilitasyon. Katuwang ang ating mga sundal at pulis, ibabangon natin ang Sambuanga mula sa nagdaang trahedya at magkakasamang nating itataguyod ang kapayapaan sa kalakham bansa. Over a month since the siege in Zamboanga City, Defense Secretary Walter Gazmin says a top Mora National Liberation Front commander is, quote, obviously dead. 
But Gazmin admits the government does not have evidence to prove Ustad Xavier Malik was killed during the standoff. Malik is the top lieutenant of MNLF founder Nur Miswari, who is believed to be the mastermind of the attack in Zabwanga City. Malik and his armed men sailed to the city on September 9 to hoist their flag and declare their independence from government. Speaking to reporters, Gazmin says if the claims of MNLF spokesman Emmanuel Fontanilia were true, that Malik is alive, they should have shown him to us. The government filed rebellion charges against Miswari, Malik, and several other MNLF members before the Zamboanga City Regional Trial Court. A reshuffle in key posts in the Armed Forces of the Philippines, or AFP, is set to take effect this week. Lieutenant General Rustico Guerrero takes over as chief of the Zamboanga City-based Western Mindanao Command, or Westmancom. He is a former Marine Commandant and chief of the Western Command in Palawan. Westmancom commands troops dealing with the breakaway Bangsamoro Freedom Fighters, the Abu Sayyaf Group, and the Mora National Liberation Front. Guerrero's new appointment triggers a reshuffle in two other posts. Air Force Lieutenant General Roy De Vertaruda will replace Guerrero at Westcom in Palawan. Westcom oversees the Kalayaan Group of Islands or the Spratly Islands in the West Philippine Sea or South China Sea. Six countries, including the Philippines and China, have overlapping claims over the territory. Major General John Bonafos takes over as chief of the Cebu-based Central Command. 30 Filipino workers expelled from Saudi Arabia say they were abused following a crackdown on illegal migrants there. This comes after an amnesty for undocumented foreigners ended over the weekend. One Filipina claims Saudi Arabian police rounded them up and placed them in a crowded cell for four days before being sent to the airport. Saudi Arabian embassy officials did not comment on the allegations of abuse. Last week, Vice President Jejumar Binay asked the Saudi Arabian government to extend its November 3 deadline. Under Saudi Arabia's policy, undocumented overseas workers should have their status legalized or else they would face repatriation. Latest estimates show at least 4,371 Filipino workers are back in the Philippines, while around 9,000 have been issued proper tra travel documents. 1,500 are still waiting for immigration clearance. The Philippine government allots 2 billion pesos for Filipino workers affected by Saudi Arabia's policy. Tropical depression Wilma weakens into a low-pressure area Monday. State Weather Bureau Pagasa says the center of the LPA is estimated at 32 kilometers southeast of Tagbilaran City. Visayas and the regions of Zamboanga Peninsula, northern Mindanao, and Caraga will have cloudly, cloudy skies with moderate to occasionally heavy rain. Cagayan Valley, Mimaropa, and the rest of Mindanao will have cloudy skies with light to moderate rain showers. Metro Manila and the rest of Luzon will have partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers. Let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 3, officials say the gunman who allegedly killed a security officer at the Los Angeles airport in California carried a note saying he planned to murder multiple agents. The gun rampage triggered chaos at the airport on November 1, disrupting over 1,500 flights. The airport only fully reopened Saturday. A prosecutor says Paul Ciancia allegedly opened fire at point-blank range on transportation security agent Gerardo Hernandez. At number 5, a newspaper report says Israel will build a security fence on the border with Jordan, a move that angers Palestinians. Israel has long stated it seeks to retain a long-term military presence along the Jordan Valley, which the Palestinians oppose. In January 20, uh, 2012, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said he would strengthen barriers along his country's border with Jordan to keep out illegal migrants. The spokesman of Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas denounces the plans. And at number 10, New York City approves a $320 million project to build the world's tallest Ferris wheel. The tourist attraction will offer incredible views of the Manhattan skyline, the Statue of Liberty, Brooklyn, and New York Harbor. It's expected to pull in 4 million visitors a year when it opens in 2016. Inspired by the success of the London Eye on the Thames and the current record holder in Singapore, work on the wheel is set to begin next year. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Rap artist Eminem takes the top honor during YouTube's first ever music awards, bagging the Artist of the Year award. The Sunday webcast kicks off with a performance by indie rockers Arcade Fire, 
followed by a performance by Lady Gaga. The 90-minute show, though, splits the internet audience, with some viewers complaining the show was censored at several points. Unlike established award ceremonies, YouTube's event organizers say the winners were determined based on viewership, subscriber, and engagement metrics. While big names Smiley Cyrus, Psy, Lady Gaga, and Justin Bieber were nominated for the Best Video Award, it was K-pop group Girls' Generation who took home the prize. Hindus around the world celebrate Diwali, the Festival of Lights. In the Philippines, up to 3,000 people gather to mark the victory of good over evil. Paterno Esmaquel reports. For the world's one billion Hindus, it's the season of change. Hindus celebrate one of their biggest feasts, Diwali. They call Diwali the Festival of Lights. During this feast, Hindus remember the return of Lord Rama, who went in exile for 14 years. It also marks the defeat of Rama's enemy. For them, it stands for the triumph of light over darkness. In their homes, Hindus light candles to symbolize the power of goodness. They do this too in the workplace to attract prosperity. It's a festival of lights. It's a festival during which we light up our homes and it is also to signify lighting up our lives. It's an opportunity for us to renew our, uh, uh, or you might say, cleanse our inner uh, personalities and bring light into our lives. Hindus believe Diwali is also about friends and families. In a mall in Pasay City, up to 3,000 people from Indian families gather on the eve of Diwali. Organizers say it's one of the biggest gatherings of Indians in the Philippines. Over 8,900 Indians live in the Philippines. This excludes those who became Filipino citizens. While now a Christian, 27-year-old Rajiv Lachmandas makes it a point to join the party. So it's, it's, it's a chance for everyone to get together once a year, see new faces, and see old faces as well. An Indian embassy official says the festival of lights in the Philippines is unique. How, how different is uh, the Filipino version of Diwali? Much better, much better. Much better because there's so much energy, there's so much bonding among the people. Because of the mutual love, affection and uh, respect the Filipino and the Indian people have for each other. Paterno S. Makel, Rappler, Manila. Rubilin Amit narrowly beats Britain's Kelly Fisher 10-7 in the finals of the Yalan Women's World 10-Ball Championship 2013 at Resorts World Manila on Monday. With a game tied at 7-7, Amit showed grace under pressure and bagged the final three racks to secure her second 10-ball crown in five years. A teary-eyed Amit says, quote, It feels wonderful. I'm so blessed. The crowd helped me big time. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories with the most clicks. Let's check out today's mood navigator. Let's start with this circle on the left. This is a pretty popular story. First male same-sex marriage at West Point Military Academy has 42% of readers feeling inspired and 20% of people feeling happy. Over to the right, the biggest circle. This is a Rappler exclusive. Napolis won't say anything, says Senator Jingoy Estrada. This has 80% of readers feeling angry and 14% of others feeling annoyed. And right next to it, an important story as well that has gotten quite a lot of traffic, corrupt LGUs to blame for steep medicine prices. This has 83% of readers feeling angry and 9% of others feeling annoyed. All these stories contribute to the mood of the day. Today, most people are angry. That's Rappler's newscast for today, Monday, November 4, 2013. Visit Rappler.com and watch your newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel in our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Natasha Gutierrez. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today. Mm -hmm.